Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently I had the great honour and pleasure to receive early review copies of two new troop boxes for the wonderful whimsical tabletop skirmish game Moonstone by Goblin King Games. These boxes represent new forces for the Leshevolt faction and introduce brand new tree folk, which are trees animated by woodland spirits. Both sets are available to pre-order right now on the Moonstone website, which I will link to in the video description below, and they have a retail release date of the 11th of September 2023. I have already looked at the gigantic Gump in a previous video, and today we will be checking out the Weird Wood, comprising two tree folk and a shape-shifting spirit, which retails for £32. Looking at the box, there's a beautiful image of the new characters, and I just have to say, Something I've probably never mentioned before is that trees creep me out, so much so it even inspired a book I wrote many years ago. Their grasping silhouettes against the darkening evening sky, the scratching of their limbs when the wind blows, the way their roots pull up out of the ground in huge snake-like coils. Trees are beautiful, but they are also unsettling, and this Weirdwood box set captures that sense of dark beauty and the crawling dread of a natural world steeped in mystery each of the characters walks that line between fantastical and creepy. If you've ever taken a walk in the woods and been struck by the majesty of the trees and the realisation that those trees could swallow you up and nobody would ever find the body, then maybe you will understand. But that's enough about my peculiarities. Moving on, looking at the back of the box, you will see the seal for the 2023 UK Games Expo Best Miniatures Rules Award. I was really pleased for the Goblin King Games team when they won this award, and I hope it helps more people to discover this great game. The first miniature we're going to look at is Snag. This is a great miniature. He comes on two frames. The first has the main body with the legs and then a small piece of bark that forms Snag's lower jaw, and you can see that Snag looks rather more spindly and diseased than Gump. The spirit has inhabited the carcass of a dead tree, and this really gives the piece a sinister vibe, especially when you see the skeleton hanging off the back. The second frame has the two arms, with long rotting grasping branch fingers and flakes of peeling bark. And here's the miniature fully assembled. It goes on a 40mm base and it's quite an imposing size, although still a lot shorter than Gump as it stands around 60mm tall. It's a very easy miniature to put together, you just glue in the lower jaw and then attach the arms, and the result is really fun. As I mentioned, Snag is a rather sinister addition to your force, but there is also plenty of humour there. I love how he is walking in the traditional arms out zombie style, with head tipped back and mouth gaping, heightening the sense of being a dead tree. And it may not be clear in the images here, but he has a little mouse crawling out of his eye socket, giving him a more corpse-like appearance. With the shadow of death hanging over Snag, it's perhaps not surprising that he's a dual faction unit. You can use him in your Leshevolt troop, but on his unit card he also has the Shades of Moonreach symbol. This is only the second character with this particular faction allegiance, the other being the death-defying zombie goblin Joby. Snag has the keywords tree folk and spirit, and he's melee 4 with a 2 inch range. He is arcane 3, but as with Gump, he is very slow and has an evade stat of plus 2. He has 11 wounds and gets 3 energy per turn as standard. He has 4 passive abilities. The first is Woodfoot, which allows him to jog over wooded patches. Then he has Splintered Branches, which gives him plus one damage on his impact and piercing attacks, which makes him a pretty consistent damage dealer in combat. However, he has another really good way to inflict damage through his ability, Accursed. When an enemy targets Snag with an Arcane ability, you can reveal a green card from your resist hand before playing cards. After resolving the current action, the enemy suffers wounds equal to the value of the green card minus one. That's really going to make enemies think twice about targeting Snag with abilities and ranged attacks, but they aren't going to be too keen on getting into melee with him either. Suddenly, that big, slow, lumbering target doesn't seem so appealing after all. Snag's last passive ability is Vengeance. If a friendly character is slain or reduced to zero wounds, Snag can use his next arcane ability this turn without using any energy. And that's really important, because Snag only has one arcane ability, but it costs three energy, so normally it would be the only thing he could do on this turn beyond a free jog action. The ability in question is Deadwood Curse, which has a range of 8 inches and applies a permanent status effect on a target when you activate it with a green card. The target of the ability gains the Deadwood Cursed status, and until it's slain, in each discard step, which happens at the end of the turn, the target and all models friendly to it within 3 inches suffer one wound. 
On the catastrophe, Snag suffers two wounds, but then all models within three inches suffer two wounds, so there is still a chance of causing harm to the enemy forces. I think this is a great ability. Being able to gradually sap the health of a target while simultaneously forcing the enemy units to spread out to avoid the area of effect damage is incredibly powerful. DPS status effect and crowd control all rolled into one. Snag's signature move is on a rising attack. It's called Hex and inflicts magical damage. The terrifying thing is, if the enemy suffers no wounds during this round of melee, it gains the Deadwood Curse status instead. Honestly, Snag's ability to apply damage in retaliation to being attacked makes him quite a challenge to face on the battlefield. How exactly are you going to take him down when every attempt could inflict damage on you? Containment, finding ways to lock him out of the game, feels like the best way to deal with him, but I'm going to need to go away and pore over different character stats to figure out the best course of action. Moving on, we have Root, a creepy little beastie formed from twisting tree roots. He comes on two frames, totaling just four pieces. You have one frame with the main body section, lots of really nice detail here. And then we have the second frame, which has his horrible little arms and a lower jaw piece. As with all of these miniatures, the parts have a bit of flaky resin residue on them, but that tends to just brush off when you give the minis a wash. And here is Root fully assembled. He went together really well and there aren't any obvious join lines on show. And this really is a sinister little thing. The way he is twisted around himself in a way that looks painful, the wailing face and the grimly pointing finger give him an eerie vibe. I love it. Looking at his character card, we can see Root is a Lesher Vault through and through, with the keywords Tree Folk and Spirit. He is much smaller, weaker and faster than his Tree Folk friends, with melee 2, range 1 inch, arcane 4 and evade 0. He has only 7 wounds and gets 3 energy per turn as standard. He gets 3 passive abilities. The first is Wood Spirit, which is like an improved version of Woodfoot. It allows Root to jog over wooded patches and additionally lets friendly tree folk within 12 inches ignore wooded patches and other friendly tree folk when determining cover for their arcane abilities. This ability caught me off guard for a moment because I was thinking it was incredibly powerful allowing tree folk characters to use their ranged abilities through wooded patches. But then I read it more carefully. It only affects cover modifiers. You will still need line of sight to the target. Root's second ability is We Are Root. I guess we all saw that pun coming. It's a really good death defying trick. Whenever Root would be slain, he may instead drop any moonstones, restore half his health and respawn in a wooded patch created earlier in the game within 12 inches. You then remove that wooded patch. I assume this represents the spirit inhabiting the tree, fleeing its previous host and finding a new tree in the nearby woodland to animate. And this is a really useful ability for keeping Root alive and in play, which is going to be important because he isn't as tough as his tree folk friends, and also it allows you to use his last ability, New Growth, fearlessly. This ability lets Root take three wounds to use an arcane ability rather than paying the energy cost. This is really useful because Root's only arcane ability is Verdant Growth, which places a 50mm wooded patch on the battlefield and costs two energy. All the tree folk benefit from the presence of wooded patches, and with 3 energy per turn, Root would normally only be able to place one patch per turn. By using new growth, he can use his arcane ability twice and give his team a big boost early on. Root's signature move is on a rising attack. It's called Encroaching Roots and deals impact or piercing damage. If the enemy suffers at least one wound during this round of melee combat, then they cannot take the jog action until the end of the turn. It's a nice way to hold a potentially dangerous foe in check while the rest of your team achieve their objectives. The final character in this set isn't a tree folk, but is a shape-shifting woodland spirit, Dranya. This is a character who was introduced in the Fate of Eric community event that ran in 2022 and ultimately led to Eric the Squire aligning himself with the Lesher Vault faction. The miniature is in just two pieces and seems very small and delicate next to her tree folk friends. You get the main body and then a very small piece for the right arm. And the detail on this model is just lovely. Look at the hair with the little flowers woven into it. She's actually in mid-transformation and her facial features are morphing into those of a fox. It should be an interesting painting challenge. I admit she was a bit fiddly to put together. The arm is very small and difficult to handle and unfortunately I couldn't get a smooth connection between the arm and the rest of the miniature, so there's a small gap. That's no big issue though, and that will get filled with green stuff no problem. The end result is cute. 
I like her slightly haughty posing, and she does have an air of cunning that's perfectly fitting for a spirit with an affinity for a fox form. Dranya only aligns with the Leshevolt and has just one keyword, spirit. She is melee 3 with range 1, arcane 4 and has an evade of minus 1. She has 8 wounds and gets 3 energy per turn as standard, although energy shortage is unlikely to be a concern for her. She has the ability Trickster, which is a really interesting one that involves learning how to play your opponent. If Dranya successfully bluffs, once per turn she may reveal the bluff to gain 3 energy. This is a great ability, but it takes a while to warm up to knowing when to best use it. Your opponent is more likely to suspect a bluff, so you may need to hold off using the ability straight away, stinging them with false bluff claims, or else using it for minor bluffs that your opponent won't want to risk calling out. You may only get a chance to pull off Trickster once in a game, but that extra energy could be enough to tip the balance. She also has the ability Shifter, which lets her jog over water and wooded patches, so she's going to be a very manoeuvrable character, and if you field her with Tree Folk, her movement isn't going to be impaired by the wooded patches they rely on. However, her real strength comes from her two arcane abilities, which are rather intricate. Mimic costs zero energy, but is limited to once per turn. If you trigger it with a green card, you pick another model within 8 inches and gain one of their keywords until the end of the turn. This could allow Dranya to gain the Tree Folk keyword, which would then allow her to benefit from Root's Wood Spirit ability or Gump's Call of the Woods. Better yet, if you trigger Mimic with a red card, Dranya or any other model within 4 inches that shares her Spirit keyword gains 1 energy. Of course, all the Tree Folk also have the Spirit keyword, so you could use this ability to, for example, give Root an extra energy so he can use Verdant Growth twice in one turn. Actually, three times if he also uses his new Growth ability. Or you could give an extra energy to Gump, who normally struggles with just two energy per turn. Note that as Mimic doesn't cost any energy and could be combined with the Trickster ability, Dranya could end up with as much as seven energy to play with on her turn. That's one cunning fox. And speaking of cunning, that's her second arcane ability, which costs 3 energy and has a range of 8 inches. Trigger it with a blue card and the target restores X plus 1 wounds, where X is the value of the card. Furthermore, if the target shares a keyword with Dranya, then they get to move X minus 1 inches. Trigger the ability with a red card and the target suffers magical damage equal to the value of the card. Then, if the target shares a keyword with Dranya, they can also be moved a number of inches equal to the card's value. So Cunning works really well in conjunction with Mimic, as Dranya can take a target's keyword and then gain maximum utility from using Cunning on that same target. I think it will be possible to string together some really interesting combos with these skills, and I'm looking forward to drilling into the options in more detail. Dranya's signature move is on a low guard. It's called Duplicity and is a defensive move that does no damage. Interestingly, if there is a model within 4 inches that did not participate in the melee and which shares a keyword with Dranya, then the damage she suffers is reduced to zero, and in the end step, Dranya is allowed to swap places with a character within 4 inches that shares a keyword and didn't take part in the fight. It's a really excellent move for getting Dranya out of a sticky situation with the assistance of some spirit friends, or even to swap Dranya with an enemy she has previously used Mimic on to pull them out of position, or maybe move closer to a Moonstone. There really is a lot to think about, and a lot of potential for clever plays. And so I think this is a really good troop box. It is tricksy, there is a lot going on. I think that is something we are seeing a bit more of as Moonstone continues to grow and mature. It's always been a clever, slightly crunchy game that demands a lot from the players, but the newer expansions really push the envelope with nuanced skill into plays that may take a while to grasp. And as a result, this troop, and a few others we have seen recently, may not be the best choice for brand new players or younger players. But regardless, I think the new tree folk are fantastic. Really interesting new additions to a game that only seems to get better in all regards. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. But that is it from me for now. Thank you once again to Goblin King Games for sending these miniatures for a review, and thank you to everyone for watching. If you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.